Hi, I'm Jack Draper. Shout out to Quality Shot Tennis. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. It's the final Roland Garros Power Rankings that we're going to be getting through today. Before we get into it, remember to that like button. Do subscribe if you're new and also to leave a rating or review if you're listening on a podcast platform. So on screen is our previous Roland Garros Power Rankings from a couple of weeks ago before Rome had started. So now we've had Rome and of course Daniel Medvedev came out on top as an unlikely champion. The Russian who really <laughs> has confessed to hating the red dirt, said he gave himself a... A 0% chance of winning the tournament if he wasn't feeling good and normally would give himself a 0% chance at a clay court tournament. But given that he felt pretty good going into Rome, he said he gave himself a 2% chance of winning it. Well, <laughs> he should have given himself a bit more because in the end, it was a very impressive run to the title, beating Sitspath Zverev and also Holger Runa in the final. So some incredible wins from him as well. And I have to say, he's been looking extremely good and did look extremely good in Rome. And I think it's a real testament to him adapting and adjusting his game as well. And look at that. He wasn't even in my top 10 going into Rome. He's definitely going to be in there now. And we'll talk about where he places. But the big question is going to be who's number one, of course. Now, number one is an interesting one because Alcaraz, uh, you'd say, you know, is it him? Well, he lost in the round of 32 in the second round to an unlikely player. And it was definitely a shock losing to Marzan, uh, 6 3 7 6. And the Hungarian played some really, really good tennis. And that he actually out drop shotted Alcaraz on the day. Some massive, massive hitting from him as well. And it would have been disappointing, I think, for Alcaraz, mainly because Alcaraz has only played one match in Rome in his career before going into Roland Garros, and that was the first round that he had uh, in Rome. Rome plays the most similarly to Roland Garros, and last year he missed that. He won Madrid, of course, in that incredible run. Then he had to rest for Rome uh, because he just was fatigued uh, or injured and then went into Roland Garros and lost in the quarterfinals to Zverev. And that wasn't surprising because he hadn't really had that experience on that specific slow type of clay. Now, he's had a bit of experience, obviously, hitting as well. He will be more prepared, I think, going into Roland Garros. And remember, this is not a, this is not me saying that, you know, these are the favourites or top 10 favourites uh, for Roland Garros. This is me saying these, in my opinion, these are the top 10 players form-wise. So going into Roland Garros, this is more of a form guide so that you guys know these are the players that have been the best form in the clay court swing going into it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to victories or, or going deep in the tournament. It just means that, you know what, these guys have performed really well and deserve to have the the <laughs> the, the recognition uh, that, you know what, form-wise going into it, they deserve to be noted. Of course, we are going to cater in, as we always do, whether they've had good performances in Roland Garros in the past, but that's more of a secondary factor. And then finally, we'll look about how they've looked this year as well. Generally, what's their form been like? Uh, but that would be a tertiary fact, if you will. So let's then talk about number one. Uh, we've touched upon Alcaraz a little bit. Ruble was at number two. He won't be there anymore. Uh, he lost in the round of 16, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Rome. And, you know, he lost to Hanfman. It's a little bit of a disappointment, I have to say. He lost the first set tiebreaker 7-6 and... Uh, won the second set 6-4, lost 6-3 in the final set. Might be a bit of fatigue, potentially uh, something to talk about. And actually, we're going to put Chorich here in the just outside because he may feature in our top 10 after a pretty good run in Rome. So Alcaraz at one, I think it's hard to really look away from that. And I'll tell you why, because Rublev made the round of 16, yes. Djokovic made the quarterfinals, fantastic. But if we're talking about results and... Titles won in the clay court swing, and who's been the most impressive? I think Alcaraz is still at one in terms of form, pure, pure form. Now, number two is interesting because there's a few players that we could really talk about. Now, we could talk about Novak Djokovic because, as I said, you take into account the secondary factor the fact that he is and has won Roland Garros twice, he made the quarterfinals, losing to Holger Runa in Rome. You know, he had a couple of decent runs in other tournaments, but, you know, I, I think it hasn't been the best clay court swing, if I'm being honest with you, for him. 
Holgeruna made a final in Monte Carlo. Won Munich, made the final in Rome. Daniel Medvedev won the final in Rome. Uh, won the title. Didn't have as you know impressive results in the other clay court tournaments, but that's a big one, of course. I actually think if we're talking about pure form, then we have to go with Holger Rune, uh, just because of how well uh, he's played throughout the swing. I think he's been almost a staple at going deep in these tournaments, and that's been really impressive. And I do think I place a bit more importance on Rome than any of the other Masters tournaments, just because of the similarity in surfacing conditions to the Grand Slam and also the fact that this is the or this was the last major tournament before the Grand Slam. Now we do have Geneva playing this week, which I'm yeah, going to disregard now. I'm not saying it doesn't mean much, but I just think it's a few days before Ron and Garros. There are some players uh, on this list who are playing in it. Uh, Rude's playing in it, who will be in the top 10 when we get through it, and Zverev as well, uh, to name two players. But in my opinion, that's not going to put them... You know, if they were to win that title, they have good confidence going into Roland Garros. Yes, great. But that's not going to be a factor in my power rankings. And it might be in yours. Uh, it might be when when you do your rankings of 1 to 10 in terms of form guide, you might think that's a big, big factor. But at 250, to me, at this stage... It's more for people who want to get more clay court matches uh, and prep themselves for the tournament. Number three, I think with Djokovic is fine, just because, as I said, historical results, and then also he's had some solid results in this clay court swing, so will keep him there. But Medvedev, I think, has to go at four. Uh, and I think you might say, well, you're placing a lot of importance on him winning the title. I am, and I think that's justified. I, I really do. Uh, and also, the reason why I put him above Tsitsipas in the semi-finals and has a, has had a pretty consistent clay court swing generally is the fact that he beat him. I think that does mean something. He beats his pass who is arguably the most comfortable on clay and for Medvedev, clay is his worst surface. It's the one that he he likes or least likes, sorry, even. And on top of that, slow clay courts, he hates even more. So, the fact that he managed to beat him on a slow clay court, I think, is a real positive, in my opinion. And to beat Holger Rune as well, who I, again, I think is most at home on the red dirt, again, tells me that he's made huge leaps and strides in his clay court game. The way he moves is a big, big plus as well. So, maybe number four, Sis Pass at five, I think, is fine as well. Now, Yannick Sinner's had an interesting one. And I have to be honest with you, from five, from six downwards, it gets quite tricky. Uh, because I'm not really sure who to go with, if in all honesty. And I think there's a bit of a mix and match going on. I'm not really sure who I should pick and who I shouldn't. Um, Chorich, you know, he had a pretty good run. He made the quarterfinals and lost his pass in straight sets. Uh, I think he's going to be somewhere along the bottom here. So we'll put him in there. Struff didn't play uh, in, in Rome. Uh, so I think he'll have to come out. He, he'll be just outside, though. I mean, I'm hoping that. You can have a decent run around Garros, but you have to remember that the clay courts will play very differently to Madrid. Uh, they'll be very, very slow. So we'll put him in there. And then we're looking at other players. When Hanford made a quarter final, but I don't think we're going to include him in our power rankings. Holger Rune is already in there. Casper Rubin, the semi final, of course. Yes, he did. Do we talk about him? Is he in? The running for, you know, being recognised. He lost in the first round of Madrid. Round of 16 to Surundolo in Barcelona. Monte Carlo lost in the round of 16 to Straff after eating Van der Schulp. Straff, to be fair, did go on to make the final. So that result doesn't look as bad now. So uh, I think we can put him there. He also made the final last year. So I do think that's a pretty okay position to put him in. Now, seven for Sinner, I think, is fine. I think Fritz has to come out. Fritz lost in the first round of Rome. That, to me, is a massive warning sign. Since Monte Carlo, he's been pretty average. I mean, he lost to Zhang in the round of 16 in Madrid. In Munich, he lost to Valenzano Schulp in the semifinals. You know, that's not great. Monte Carlo, even in the semifinals, that was where he made his big splash, of course, beat Vavrinka, Lehechka, Sissipas, 
some good, very good wins there. Uh, and we haven't even put Rublev in it, actually. And I, you know what? Rublev has to be at six because of his results. And I, I'm sorry, I have to put him in there. So I think actually Rub, Rublev, Rude, Sinner. Now, does Massetti get into my top ten? That's, that's the question, isn't it? Because he had some, he's had some solid results. Round of 16 in Rome, lost to Sitspas. Madrid, first round to Hanfman, who, to be fair, has won and beaten some good players in this clay court swing. So, shout out to him, by the way. Semi final of Barcelona, lost to Sitspas. Again, Sinner beat Massetti in Monte Carlo. I mean, in the what quarterfinals. He's also some good players, so I think we can put him in there. Uh, just below Sinner. That's fine. Uh, Chorich at 10, or do we go for someone like Nori, who's been very, very solid over the last few years, especially on clay. Uh, hasn't been as solid recently. He's playing in Lyon this this week. Lost to Djokovic in the round of 16 in Rome. Beat Fuksovic Muller. Lost in the second round of Madrid. Barcelona round of 16. Lost to Massetti. Monte Carlo lost to Sorondolo. Sorondolo is also one we've got to talk about. Um, Leon, you know, he won a first round match. He's playing Jack Draper in the quarterfinals. Rome lost to Casper Rude after beating Sinner, Barrera, and Wu. Madrid lost in the first lost in the first round. Fine. Barcelona lost to Dan Evans. That's a bit of a bad loss, but did beat Casper Rude. Round of sixteen, and also beat Nori. In the first round, lost to Sarundolo. Sorry, lost to Berrettini in the second round. I think Sarundolo might have to sneak in there. I think it's between Sarundolo and Chorik, actually. I mean, obviously, TFO as well. I was struggling with the number 10, in honesty. So, what? So, Chorich made a quarter final at Rome, semi final at Madrid, round of 16 at the Croatia Open. Monte Carlo, round 64. Chorich. No, I think Chorich is, is right. Chorich is right. I think Chorich is definitely the one to to put in there. I think so. I think so. I think Sarundalo is just outside. I think Sarundalo is just outside. Fritz, I don't think he's just outside. No honesty. Lehechka as well has been really poor. Paul, not really. Hatronov, he can stay in there. TFO, FA, no, he's, he's been really poor in the clay court swing. To us. I don't really have him being one of the players in form whatsoever. TFO, second round lost to Massetti. Second round to catch in Madrid. First round, Rusevori. Monte Carlo, uh, yeah, I mean, take TFO out there as well. I know he won Houston. Since then, it's been all downhill. Uh, so I think I'm happy with that as my final power rankings for the men's side. Let me know your thoughts. A lot of discussion in my head and debating of who I should pick. Let me know your top 10 in terms of your form guide going into Roland Garros. Who would you pick as your top 10? At number one, I've got Carlos Alcaraz. Number two, Holger Rune. Number three, Novak Djokovic. Number four, Daniel Medvedev. Number five, Sissipas. Number six, Rublev. Number seven, Kasper Ruud. Number eight, Yannick Sinner. Number nine, Lorenzo Massetti. And number 10, Borna Chorich. And just outside the players who just missed the cut, we've got Sarundolo, Struff, Nori, and Hatchinov. I think Struff is a bit of an ambitious one. We'll keep him in there because he made a final. Let me know your thoughts on who you've picked in your top 10. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe and well. We'll see you on the next video.